Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lou. On July 29, Barclays Center will host its fourth major boxing card of 2017. Barclays Center is providing a great platform for Brooklyn-born fighters, but has also become a destination for the sport's best talent. Adrian and Mikey are two prime examples of that. Adrian and Mikey, I'm thrilled to welcome you back to our ring, and I look forward to what will be one of the year's most talked about fights. Adrian, you won a world title at Barclays Center in 2013. Mikey, you made a big comeback at Barclays Center just last year. Seeing you both square off on July 29th will be a special night, not only for Brooklyn boxing, but for all boxing fans. I want to thank my partner's premier boxing champions, Lou DiBella and Steven Espinoza, as well as their dedicated staffs. Fight fans everywhere have already circled July 29 on their calendars, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you and them next month. I would be remiss if I did not provide my quick opinion regarding August 26. Tomorrow you will hear from an unhappy promoter not unlike what you heard from Kathy Duva over the weekend, when he arrives in town to create hype for his September fight. Do not be fooled or manipulated by what he has to say. He is a hypocrite who is only concerned about his own financial well-being. Boxing has had a great year to date, 50-50 fights that have highlighted established fighters and future stars of the sport. I am a firm believer that press for the sport is good for all of us. It creates awareness, talk value, and takes us from the back pages to the front. When can you remember the amount of promotional value we have received as a sport on multiple general market platforms reaching casual fans like we have received over the past week? The question is, what do we do to take advantage of this enormous narrative for boxing that has been created by the Mayweather-McGregor fight? What we do is continue to what we have done this year and put on the best fights for the fans and keep the momentum going. Boxing will be in the headlines all summer long. Let's all embrace the moment and put boxing back in its rightful place as one of the premier sports in America. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, it's funny how when you walked out of a nightclub or bar that that promoter was trying to pump Canelo Alvarez and, and Conor McGregor. And now all of a sudden, man, he's got a lot of hate in him, you know. But this fight's, look, Mayweather Conor McGregor's happening because the people wanted it, because there's incredible demand for it. It's a spectacle, you know. It's a spectacle. It's an event. And it's going to be on Showtime pay-per-view. And Showtime, yeah, they're doing that spectacle, and they're also doing this which is just pure boxing and the best you can make. And, um, and frankly, Showtime right now is spanking their, comp uh, you know, their competition's rear ends all over the street. And that's due to the efforts of the guy I'm going to bring up right now, my friend Steven Espinoza. Uh, thanks, Lou. Uh, and, and thanks especially to Brett Yarmark. What, what Lou and Brett have done in the recent past at, at Barclays Center is, uh, is, is pretty amazing. Uh, the bar has been set so high. Let's just look at this year. You start off the year with Bad Duke Jack versus James DeGale in a fight that certainly deserves consideration as fight of the year. You come back with uh, Thurman versus Garcia and CBS. It's a high bar to get a main event at the Barclays Center. They've set the standard very, very high. And this fight, July 29th, Broner versus Garcia, certainly satisfies it. These are two of boxing's brightest young stars, both under 30 years old. It's a four-division world champion against a three-division world champion. Mikey's moving up to 140. Uh, Adrian's undefeated at 140 and below. Something's got to give. Stepping back for a moment, July 29th is the 19th live boxing event on Showtime this year. 19 live boxing telecasts, and we're talking the end of July. 15 world title fights, none of them on pay-per-view. Three world title unifications, three world title rematches. And like this fight, uh, there have been six times where a top five fighter 
fought another top five fighter in the division. There's no other network doing that as consistently as we are. And when another network occasionally does do a top five versus top five, they're gonna charge you $70 for it. So we're proud of these two fighters that we're bringing them to you on Showtime. We're proud of this matchup. I, I thank both Mikey and Adrian for taking this fight. I give them all credit in the world because it took each of them about 30 seconds at most to make this deal because they're ready to have big fights like the rest of the sport this year. We'll see you on July 29. Um, first, I'm going to bring up uh, a young guy. He's younger than me. He's not that young, but he's younger than me. Um, who I've worked with since he was a champion himself and a, and a fighter. One of the, you know, been friends for a long time. One of the very best trainers in, in all of boxing, um, Robert Garcia. Thank you, Lou. Thank you all for coming. You know, it's 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 just. Great to be back here in New York. You know, uh, every time we come here we'll, with Mikey or any of any other of my fighters, we get nothing but love. It's great to be back here working with uh, Showtime, Lou DeBella, and you know, I'm glad to see a lot of my my friends that I have here in New York. You know, we're we're excited about this fight. You know, we know Adrian is very talented. We know how uh, how big of a guy he is in in boxing, and uh, that's why Mikey Mikey said yes, like he, like they said, in less than 30 seconds. You know, Mikey wants those big fights. Mikey didn't didn't want anything else but big fights, and uh, we got it here. So on July 29th, expect a hell of a fight because I know both these guys are going to be in great shape to give everybody the best that they have. Thank you. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my co-promoters and friends, uh, Floyd Mayweather and Leonard Ellerby. Um, they're a bit busy right now, <laughs> so, so they're, they're not in town, but um, they will be for the fight, and uh, I just want to give them props. And um, bring up another terrific trainer, guy, guy's uh, been around boxing forever. Um, this is a real boxing guy, a real true boxing man, and a terrific trainer, Mike Stafford. Thank you, Lou. Uh, yes, I like the... Thank you everybody for coming out, the media. Uh, I like to thank Showtime. It's really been doing a good job for all these years in boxing. Uh, I'd like to thank Al Heyman, um, who put this thing, fight together, and um, thank Robert and Mikey for taking the fight. Uh, <clears throat> like Robert said, it's, these guys are two talented guys, and they're gonna put a good show. Adrian, we back up in Colorado Springs now. This is where we started when I took Adrian when he was 18 years old. It's like home to him in training. So you see the results that we had when we was in training at Cairo Springs. You know, he won championships, championships after championships. So expecting the same thing. He's going to win big, I think real big. So, you know, it's going to be a hell of a fight, like Robert said. But, you know, I think we'll be victorious. Thanks a lot. Adrian Broner spent a lot of the recent years um, jumping up and down that mythical paper, you know, pound for pound list. He's been on it for a long time, up and down that, that list. Um, the young man to my left, uh, after a little bit of time off, has made his way back onto that list emphatically with a couple of great performances since he's come back. Um, absolutely one of the most talented young guys in, 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 the, in the sport of boxing. Um, this guy's got buku talent, can do everything in the ring. Um, tremendous uh, ambassador for the sport also. Uh, my pleasure to bring up Mikey Garcia. Oh, 135 pound champion of the world too. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you guys for uh, joining us. Well, I'm, I'm very uh, thankful for the opportunity. You know, I can't uh, stress the, the importance of this fight for me in my career at this point. I think it's uh, it's the biggest fight uh, that I could I could actually have, and you know there's there's other names out there that were tossed around, but nothing made more sense than you know facing Adrian Broner. Um, 
you know, he's definitely accomplished a lot. He's, he's an accomplished fighter. And, um, I mean, when he's at his best, he's really at his best. And that's what I expect. Um, he's taking things a lot more serious by moving camp to Colorado. That shows me that he's, he's in it 100%. So I, I expect the best out of him, which will also bring out the best out of me and in return give the fans the best fight possible. You know, I think uh, New York has treated me very well. I've had success here, and um, I know it's a big boxing community here. They love their boxing, and that's what it's really about. I really, really love the attention, the, the support from all the fans. That's what makes me feel a world champion. It's not the belt. You know, it's, it's not that. It's, it's the fans. And in a way, I feel like I owe that to them by performing to the best of my abilities. And that's why on July 29th, I'm going to do... I'm going to come ready to perform for all you guys to be able to remember this fight as one of the best fights in the year and see another side of me. I know Adrian Brown's going to come with everything he's got to beat me. I'm going to be there 100% to beat him. So in the end, the real winner is the, ch the, the, the championship fight. It's not even about the championship fight. There's no championship at stake. It's the fans that get to win. You know, that, that's, that's, the, that's the, the winner. Um, but July 29th, my hand will be raised. Thanks. Um, one more time, it's Adrian Broner, Mikey Garcia, Showtime Champions Boxing, presented by Premier Boxing Champions, Barclay Center, July 29th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, tickets are available, Ticketmaster.com, Barclay Center Box Office, and uh, you can call 1-800-745-3000 also at Barclay Center. Um, this next guy is uh, he's a star, you know, he's a star. Oh, he's got to be talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and, and he's controversial. Oh, my God. He's, he's the problem, and sometimes he's his own biggest problem. <laughs> he can fight his ass off. Um, he's entertainer, entertaining. A lot of people hate him, but they want to pay to see him. A lot of people want to see him lose. A lot of people want to see him win. Got a lot of love and he got a lot of hate. And that's worked for a lot of people in this business over the years. Guys like Hamed, guys like Floyd Mayweather, you know, and his ratings have always reflected the fact that people care about him. And I care about him too, which is why I hope he becomes less of a problem to himself and more of a problem to other people um, in the ring. Um, so it's my pleasure to bring up a guy who um, runs around talking about billions. Uh, A.B., Adrian Broner. Um, he said a lot about me. Um, hopefully he's one of the people that like me and don't, don't dislike me. <laughs> but um, I want to thank everybody that showed up today. I want to thank God. You know, I've been in some crazy situations, you know. I'm just blessed to be here today. And, you know, um, to get a fight like this in this day, you know, for me, it's, it's huge. You know, you got a, a three-time world champion and a four-time world champion fighting each other. You know, boxing is going back to the old days where uh, the best fight the best. And uh, Mikey is definitely one of the best out there today. Well, this fight, his name is Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> Run inside, it's funny time. <laughs> but, um... You know, um, it's going to be a hell of a fight. I know when everybody fight Adrian Bronner, they, they bring their A game because they feel like if we beat Adrian Bronner, then our career go to that next level. But, you know, um, for this fight, you know, uh, I ain't bullshitting. You know, you know uh, I'm going back to Colorado. I've been getting it in. I've been training. Everybody be like, uh, is he going to make weight? The weight's not a problem. You know, uh, I, ha I haven't made weight. Lately, because for what, you know? And they gonna pay me the same. If I fight 44, fuck yeah, I'm gonna fight 44. <laughs> so, and then, and then everybody be making a big deal about it when on paper it say 44 and I make 44 and they be like, oh, he's overweight. I'm like, shit, I made weight, look at the paper. You know, um, now I got a reason to make 140, you know? 
Because uh, we ain't about to pay a man to put, put these hands on him. They talking about giving up a half a million if I don't make weight. Y'all don't think I'm going to make weight? I ain't got a dollar to give to nobody right now, man. All my baby mamas and kids, man, y'all crazy. Y'all... See, I... Listen, man, you know, um, you know, uh, but I'm definitely training my ass off, man. And I think this will be one of the best performances of my career. And I think this will take me to the superstardom where, where I need to be, you know. Um, and, you know, I heard, I don't, be, I don't be getting into this, the media and stuff like that, you know, but I heard like that, like, they got Mikey like five to one. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you like, I just feel like like you got some serious betters out there looking at that like five to one. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't give me no chance. But y'all sit up and say uh, McGregor gonna beat Floyd. <laughs> man, this boxing game crazy, man. So so after you know after this fight, I just feel like if I if I come out untouched, you know, I feel like I'm gonna be victorious. I feel like I should come back and fight on um, Floyd's undercard against Nate Diaz. <laughs> but um, you know um, I just hope nobody put their house on this on, on this fight against me because if you do that, then you'll be living like Will Smith and Hancock <laughs> after the fight, man. You know um. It's gonna be a hell of a fight. I know Robert Garcia, he's, he's training his little brother to death, <laughs> like always. He's 36 and 0. Um, you know, he's undefeated, 40 and under. And um, if you don't, if people really don't know, I'm really undefeated, 40 and under also. And um, you know, um, somebody, oh, gotta go, even though mine already left. But <laughs> 40 and under, somebody got, oh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I could have came up here and I could have been, been, been mean and rude to these guys, but, you know, uh, I have to say, man, I got love for, for Robert Garcia and, and Mikey. Like, it, it really never been bad blood. But for this fight, fuck y'all, though. <laughs> I don't. I, um, <laughs> For real, man. Uh, you know we could be back. We could be back cool after the fight, dog. But for this fight, I got, I got, I got to get on y'all ass, man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, uh, I want everybody to tune in July 29th. All jokes aside, you know, you will see a more serious Adrian Bronner, and um, it can get ugly, man. It can get ugly uh, July 29th, man. So uh, I want everybody to come out, and I want to thank everybody about being in the building, baby. We're gonna do a, a, a Q and A like right now. From everyone's gonna sit up here. We're gonna do a Q and A right now, and um, we're gonna. You, you're also you have mics in the crowd. Test them, test them. One, two, test them, test them. First question. Oh, I did. Who has questions? Yeah, Mickey, you never fought at uh, 140, so moving from 135 to 140, I mean, he's been up to uh, welterweight and so forth. Uh, what weight are you going to be coming in at that fight? Uh, 140 or a little less, or uh, can you elaborate on that? Well, I, I think uh, being that the max limit is 140 for the weigh-in, I'll be right there or a little under. Um, but, um, I mean, fight night, I'll hydrate a little bit. Uh, I don't expect to rehydrate too much. Um, maybe, you know, six pounds, maybe tops. I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, give you a final on that. Mikey, Black Star News and uh, Adrian Bruno. Question, uh, first of all, a comment. Between the two of you, there's seven world titles, unless my mathematics is just it's incorrect. Now, question. Is this fight a keep busy fight slash eliminator slash 
on the way to a possible title shot with Bud Crawford. This fight's not a keep busy fight or wait to fight Bud Crawford. Bud Crawford's not as big as the two guys on this stage. <laughs> He's a great fighter, but this isn't to lead up to anybody. Oh, hey, Lloyd. Oops. Oh, wait. How you doing? This is uh, Terrell from Fight View 360. This question is from Mikey. Um, Broner's had issues in the past with pressure fighter power punchers. You are somewhat known to be more of a uh, calculated puncher. Do you plan on um, being more aggressive? You know, I'll be prepared to do whatever it takes to win the fight. Being that naturally, um, like you said, more calculated, you know, boxer puncher, that's probably what I'm going to come out, you know, to do. But if I have to pressure the fight and press on the fight, then I'll also be ready to do that. You know, w w one more quick thing. People talk about catch weights, and sometimes there have been catch weights, and you sit there and you go, all right, why is there a catch weight? Well, this guy's a 35 pound champion. This guy just fought at 47. So this is at 140. This is a real catch weight. There's a real catch weight between the best and the best between two elite fighters. And it's the weight that's fair to both guys to make this fight happen, and that's what they both wanted to do. Uh, question, hey, Lloyd Carroll from the Queens Chronicle. Adrian, question for you. Colorado Springs, high out, beautiful place. I like the Broad Motel, but high altitude, and isn't that make it tougher to work out and to lose weight if it's, you know, if, if breathing becomes harder to, uh, to do? I think you want to know people that look, think, think boxing go by the book, and it don't, you know, um, of course it's tough. But at the end of the day, you know, um, this is not my first time in Colorado Springs. You know, uh, what was that, day before, day before yesterday, I just ran up, like, uh, a mountain 8,500 feet up. You know, I'm feeling good. I'll make weight easy. I'll make weight easy. Like I said before, I just didn't have a reason. Now I got a reason to make weight. Adrian, uh, Keith Heideck from BoxingScene.com. Um, over here. Adrian. Oh, okay, I see you. I see you. Is it an advantage for you to fight him at 140, or is it a disadvantage because you have to come down and wait? Or do you um, I don't really see the advantage or disadvantage in this fight. Um, I, w I wouldn't say it's a 50-50 fight, you know, um, but more like a 50 well, 49. <laughs> now I'm joking, man. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, he's a 35, 40-pounder. I'm a 40-pounder, 35-pounder. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a fight. Nesta Gibbs with the Boxing Voice. This question is for uh, Broner and Mike Stafford. Do you guys use this as added motivation, kind of as a get back, being as though you've been there with Robert Garcia now, in the past? You know I don't like you. Why did you get the mic? You know, you know I don't. I'm joking. Give him back the mic, man. Give him back. Get his man back the mic, man. Give the Boxing Voice the mic, man. What you say? Come on, go ahead. I'll take your character. Come on. Is it added motivation and uh, kind of get back? You've been here before with Robert Garcia and Marcos Maidana. Um. It's really not get back, man. You know, uh, like I said before, I tip my hat to Robert Garcia. He's a he's a friend of mine. Um, uh, Maidana's a, a friend of mine. You know, uh, it's a part of business. This is business. After this fight, hopefully we can go out and have steak together and talk about it. Hi, this is John with the Sentinel. Um, my question is for Mikey. Coming up at 140, do you feel that that weight you'll be comfortable and strong enough? to fight an opponent like Adrian Broner? Well, 140 pounds uh, to me makes sense for this type of fight. Um, I still feel that 135 is probably the best division for me right now. Um, after my last performance at 135, I felt great, fast, strong. Um, but I don't feel 140 will be much different. I think 140 will allow me to make weight a little more comfortable and still keep my speed and my power. All right, thank you. Hi, question for Adrian. This is Mike Coppinger from Ring TV. You know, I, I've seen the Snapchat. I see you're training hard. Um, you know, other than being in Colorado, what's the biggest difference for this camp? What, like, what things are you doing that are different? Um, I'm just more focused, man. You know, um, in in a city in, in Cincinnati or D.C. is is so much going on and so many distractions. Whether other than in Colorado Springs, it's nothing to do but. Uh, 
look at the mountains and box. <laughs> uh, I might go bowling here and there, but other than that, uh, I'm eat shit, sleeping, and boxing. That's it. <laughs> My question is from Mikey Garcia. This is Nick with Real Talk Boxing. Robert Garcia and Maidana had a lot of success against Adrian Broner in their last fight. What can you use in that fight to be able to use that against Broner? Well, Maidana has a whole different style of fighting than I do. And so I, I really can't take anything you know, from what I've seen with, with Marcos and, and use it with, with Adrian because that's not, that's not me. That's not my fight game. That's not my fight game. But, um, you know, I, I saw that uh, Adrian, you know, was, was uh, able to be hurt. Maidana was able to hurt him, drop him. So that gives me, you know, a little bit more confidence that maybe I can do the same. Um, however, that fight was also at 147. Maidana is a huge puncher as well. So, I mean, the, the, the power is different. I don't know if I'll be able to carry that power. I feel I will, but who knows? Um, fight night, we'll, we'll find out. Do you believe if you hit him with your best shot, you think you'd be able to hurt him and put him down? He's against me right here. <laughs> he got him right here. Oh man, like. I I don't I don't know, man. I I mean I feel like you know I I can I can hurt just about anybody with the right punch, and anybody really can can get hurt. I mean I can get hurt. Anybody can get hurt with the right punch. Um, you know, but uh, I I think it's it's one of those fights where people might be looking at the power a little too much, because uh, there's more to it than just power. We're gonna go to the last question. Right uh, I want to set a record and make this a half-hour press conference. Right here. Right here. Right here. Um, Terrell and Fight 360 again. You said you're hearing that you're uh, – this is for Broner. You're saying you're hearing that you're a five-to-one underdog because what's going around is um, – I've been doing some surveys on social media. So basically, they're saying that Mikey Garcia is the better boxer, but you're the harder puncher. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, who say he's the better boxer? How can you say that? Hey, bro, it's just, I just said it so on social media. I'm no, just no, I'm saying, I, I, I'm gonna just answering your question. Damn, you getting mad at my, that I'm answering your question? Nope. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, you know, um, you know, in his fights, he just decides the box. Who says, who, who says that I come in this fight and I outbox the shit out of this guy? <laughs> you never know. You know, I, I can do it all. Well, that's what I'm saying, because um, I, you are, okay, you are a great boxer. But it's been known my that... My punch for a boxer. Which one? Or I'm going to say... Boxer puncher. How about you, that? you want my honest opinion? Yeah. You're a little flat-footed. Huh? But when somebody's in front of you, uh, you're a great boxer. I'm keeping uh, it 100. Uh, when somebody's right in front of you, you're an excellent boxer. Okay. So if people are not pressuring you or throwing a lot of punches, then you have a great chance to win. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I just... I just... I just... I, I, I just... Okay. All right, look. All right, fuck, are fuck this, Mikey. Look, Mikey, I'm still going to pay you. And then I'll 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 pay him fifty thousand to fight me, and I'll show him how much of a boxer I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for coming. Be at the Barclays Center on July 29th. Showtime, Brooklyn Boxing Barclays Center. This is what we do. Um, we're gonna pose the fighters, and then they're gonna sit up here for one for one on one. So we're gonna pose them, and then they're gonna sit up here, and you guys can come up and ask questions.